views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to heal your mind, body, and spirit? You can give yourself the gift of whole body wellness. Stay tuned for the next hour as Audrey Michelle brings you the new hit show, Rewired Life Radio. Learn to love, heal, celebrate. On Transformation Talk Radio, Audrey is going to take you on a journey to healing and wellness by sharing her infinite wisdom and creating incredible conversations with the expert guests she brings on. Get ready to rewire your life. Here is your host, Audrey Michelle. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Rewired Life Radio, where we learn to love, heal, and celebrate. Of course, I'm your host, Audrey Michelle, and I have to tell you, um, you know, I find this show really funny. It's a really funny play on time. So the five to 10 minutes before the show goes live at 103 feels like an hour, and the hour show feels like five or 10 minutes. So it's really funny. So I have to find ways to distract myself in that like 10 minutes. And of course, you know, Facebook maybe fills that time. Uh, and that's what I was doing today. I was like scrolling my Facebook feed. And, you know, as things do, um, this video popped up on my feed at the exact right time. Like, thank you, universe, of course. Um, But I have to tell you about it because it hit me in a way that was just like, uh, well, this is what today's show is about. So it's um, America's Got Talent. Well, I guess Britain's Got Talent. So the British version of the show. And um, it's this 15-year-old boy named uh, Kyle Tomlinson had been on Britain's Got Talent before. And, you know, the caption says, after being harshly rejected years ago, this boy has come back and is going to sing for you. And he sings the song Hallelujah, and he sings it gorgeously, right? And of course, like, I'm a sucker for these things, and I have tears in my eyes, just like everybody else in the audience, you know, watching this. And um, he gets done, and Simon Cowell, you know, he asks, like, well, who is it that told you that last time you know, you weren't good enough and you needed to go get a teacher. And he said, I thought he was going to say Simon Cowell because that's usual. And it was this other guy. And, um, you know, they were talking about it. And Simon asked, like, essentially said, good for you for showing back up after somebody told you you were not good enough. So that's what today's show is about. It's all about finding our worthiness after feeling like we're not good enough. So so how to shift from, from this feeling, this gut feeling of I'm not good enough into a place of I'm totally worth it. So as I'm sitting here in the minutes before my show, you know, crying about, um, this, this kid in Britain showing back up after being told he wasn't good enough, um, and going back and practicing and, and nailing it, um, you know, what does that look like? How do you get to that place? And more importantly for today, you know, his journey here was somebody told him he wasn't good enough. Now, what if you're the person telling yourself you're not good enough? How do you shift out of that? You know, a heavy question. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. Of course, um, if you've been listening to the show at all, you know, this month is all about digging deeper into the concepts of my online masterclass, Soul Awakening, and how to rewire your life. And, um, and a really important thing, you know, last, last week we talked about finding unconditional love for yourself. And today we're going to talk about um, how to get past some of these really deep, hurtful feelings, for example, not feeling good enough. And we're going to talk about it, of course, in the way of these neuroplastic pathways and how we short circuit our our emotions. And, you know, so I've been talking about now for a few weeks and, um, you know, how do we start to break that short circuit of telling ourselves we're not good enough or taking on somebody else's words, i.e. in this video, this, this, um, kid on Britain's Got Talent of not taking on the words of somebody else, whether it be, somebody in a power position, which is what he experienced. Um, Or if it's um, somebody you trust or a peer, you know, 
um, a parent or somebody raising you as a child or a peer at school telling you're not good enough or a peer at work now as an adult telling you you're not good enough. Um, how do you not take that on? And if you did take it on or if you believe it yourself, how do you start to break that short circuit? Um, and so this is really what my six-week class, Soul Awakening, is all about, breaking these short circuits, starting to um, use my process. And my process to healing, you know, I talk about it all the time. It's all about loving yourself, healing your body and mind, and celebrating life. So, of course, if you want to know more about this class, you can always go to AudreyMichelle.com and learn more. And in the meantime, it it launches on um, September 19th is the beginning of the class. And in the meantime, I've got all kinds of free trainings that I'm doing um, for you to learn more about this class. And so, like I said, this process to rewire your life, to break these unhelpful short circuits we've created with our emotions is this process that I used to heal from 17 years of chronic pain and disease. And it's what I continue to use uh, to live from a place of alignment and to listen to inner wisdom and to listen to my higher self. Um, And, you know, today's show is no different. Um, And one of the things I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, how do we create these short circuits? How does this even happen, right? Like nobody wants to create a a circuit that's like, I'm not good enough and really make a pattern in our life um, to believe that for ourselves. Like nobody intends on doing stuff like that. So how does this even happen? And um, again, just to review what these neuroplastic pathways are, um, it sounds really complicated and it can be and it cannot be. Um, if you break it down, we all have these neuroplastic pathways. Essentially, it's our brain, it's our nervous system, and it's our way towards learning, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of the above. Um, and we create these circuits within learning. And of course, the example I like to use is, you know, an infant learning to walk. It's really stumbly at the beginning. And as these neuroplastic pathways begin to um, organize themselves and short circuit themselves, uh, walking becomes easier. It lets stumbly, right? Like the um, toddler, the infant, uh, you know, is walking more smoothly. Um, And so, how does this then apply um, these short circuits that we are building and organizing for ourselves around not feeling good enough? And what do I mean by that? And where does this come from? So here's the thing. We like to skim over these feelings thinking they're normal, right? Um, You know, maybe we have one painful event, again, going back to this Kyle that I saw on Facebook um, singing beautifully on Britain's Got Talent. Um, you know, he has one incident where he goes and he puts himself on out on the line and he gets told, you know, you're not good enough. And he has a choice. He can make it unsafe for him um, to do that again, right? Because that didn't feel good. That doesn't feel good to put yourself out on the line and to be told, you know, thank you for showing up, but that's not good enough. That doesn't feel good. And so um, we have a choice. We can organize uh, these short circuits, these neuroplastic pathways. We can allow them to organize themselves in a way that says, oh boy, I don't, I do not want to feel that again. And we can say singing's not safe for, you know, or um, sharing our opinion isn't safe or, you know, whatever it is we make up for ourselves, it's not safe. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to show up in that way again. And and so we allow our um, brainwaves, our neuroplastic pathways to organize themselves in a way um, of avoidance, right? Avoiding that situation again. And, um, you know, we all do this. This is a very common thing. Um, And it's something I hear quite often, um, And some of the examples I would say of not feeling good enough, um, for example, at your job, it might show up as a lack of confidence. It might show up as not volunteering for projects, not asking for a raise, not not taking a vacation because uh, you feel like you need to prove your loyalty or your worth ethic, et cetera. Um, 
And then it even shows up, you know, I see a lot of women who come and they sit on my sofa and um, some of their concerns show up as not feeling like a good enough wife or a good enough mother. And, um, you know, that shows up as feeling exhausted, um, exhausting yourself in a way of, you know, keeping the perfect house or making sure the kids are in every activity, running yourself ragged, like driving all over to soccer practice, piano practice, whatever. Um, always saying yes to other people about, you know, watching their children, being the queen of the carpool and just essentially not taking time for yourself. And then even, would you even know what to do with that time if you had it, right? Some of us, if, if that pathway is strong enough, you know, I talk to women who are just like so far past knowing what taking care of themselves even look like that they, they can't even fathom what they would do with an hour that is literally for them. So that's kind of what we're talking about is these patterns, right? These negative patterns that we have created for ourselves. So these three words, this not good enough can run our life without us even knowing it. And that's what we're talking about today. And I'm so excited. So I have a guest today, Michelle Tagola, and she is here. Um, She's going to join us next segment and for the third segment and share her story and how she overcame this not feeling good enough. And then what she does in her work to help her clients shift out of not feeling good enough and into totally worth it. And of course, in the final segment, as I've been doing this month of August, I'll be taking your questions. So if you have a question about how you can shift out of not feeling good enough, or if you're curious, if, you know, are some of these feelings that I'm dealing with, are these not good enough feelings? You know, if if you don't even know, right? Like, is this pattern one, the one that you're talking about? Uh, You can call in at 800-930-2819 and or you can send us a message on the transformationtalkradio.com uh, website. Um, type it in. Justin's going to be collecting questions. And then in the last segment, I am going to be answering those. So um, we're going to take a quick break. Of course, you're listening to Rewired Life Radio with me, Audrey Michelle. And we are talking about how to shift from not feeling good enough to totally worth it. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching or find free meditations, you can always go to AudreyMichelle.com, which is where there's going to be more information about my class, Soul Awakening. So stay tuned. And we are going to welcome today's guest, Michelle Tegola, a woman's empowerment coach, which is awesome. Uh, Welcome her to the show and learn more about worthiness and what that means to her life and her work. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Welcome to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat Basile, the host of the Dr. Pat Show, and I am so thrilled that we've created this venue for all of you out there. Dr. Pat Basile will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. What we have heard is that you want to ensure for us that we keep positive, holistic, uplifting, transformative talk radio on the air. We're excited to bring you the contemporary conversations about Lyme disease. We promise not to let the light fade on Lyme. So fasten your seat belts. We've got lots more to share with you in the weeks to come. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio with Dr. Pat and help keep our mission strong on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit the truth is funny.com. Gain powerful insight and practical tools to support you on your spiritual journey. Access your higher self and tune in every second and fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific to a life untethered with Andrew Martin walking the path of freedom. Andrew is a highly attuned intuitive oracle, energy worker, spiritual teacher, and international radio host. For more about Andrew and his services, visit thelightedones.com. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G dot com. Okay, you guys, we are back on Rewired Life Radio. I'm your host, Audrey Michelle, and today we are talking about how to feel totally worth it. And in the first segment, I talked about how rewiring your life requires looking at what patterns are running your life, specifically where are you feeling not good enough? You know, when I started looking for guests for today's show, Michelle popped onto my radar And it really only took one sentence on her website for me to be super excited. Uh, And I was like, well, this girl's totally going to be on my show. She says, I help women who struggle with self-confidence and worthiness to achieve empowerment and find their inner strength by embracing their story. And so I wanted to introduce today's guest. So totally pumped. Michelle's a women's empowerment coach, an author, a speaker, and a mother of three. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Audrey. I'm so, so excited and, and so blessed to be uh, a part of what you're doing here, spreading the message. Thank um, you. Yeah. So, I know. Um, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> On the break, we were talking about, um, you know, in the days leading up to the show, I always have Facebook posts and it was really cute. Like your friends and family were just like blowing up your Facebook feed, like, Michelle, we're so excited. And that makes <laughs> me like so excited for you. So I know. So I'm hi so to all of them. Excited. Yes. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I'm so excited and I'm so grateful for all of them. It's so true. Um, so, you know what, I, I'm, I'm just so excited to talk about this because it is really a huge important part of, um, I found my healing, um, definitely personally and, and in my business as well. And I think, you know, where it all started for me, uh, you know, was in childhood, like it does for most, you know, I had really fond memories of growing up. There were really happy times. Uh, but I also remember the day that it all changed. Um, you know, my, within my childhood, you know, I, I had thought, you know, I, things were happy and, and, um, you know, but things really started to um, switch over at about the age of about 17, you know, when I started to realize that there was a darker side that was being hidden from us as a family to to just really keep the family together. And I know, um, you know, many couples stay together for these reasons, but it was something I had no idea about, you know, uh, until one day after about 22 years of marriage, my mother found the courage to recognize she had had enough and she found the strength to leave um, really for her own well-being and her survival. And I was forced to grow up really, really quickly. Um, And I'm grateful for that, though. But, you know, and and that's just, you know, how how the cookie crumbled. And, you know, once she left, things really went from bad to worse. Uh, You know, my father, he found a really tough time dealing with three children and, and it was just a lot to deal with. So soon, um, I was on my own at 17 and, you know, really having to fend for myself. Um, but you know, life was tough. You know, I worked hard to finish high school and, you know, I went on to finish college and I literally, um, you know, it's funny, like that image is really like 
clawing my way ahead in life, you know, um, and, and having, you know, earned some, um, some successes along the way. Um, and as I forged my way further, um, I was just yet again, like life happens, right? Ups and downs. I was yanked back and I was really challenged when my clinical practice, uh, in massage therapy started to tank. And, you know, when, when some things, um, you know, they're just out of your control, all you can do is just stand there and, you know, and just watch it crumble. And, uh, and where I was, was, you know, it was a difficult situation. Cause you know, when your expenses are like way up there and your income dips, you know, below that, you know, it's really when, um, things get difficult, right. Things just aren't adding up. And those were certainly some of the toughest times in my life. You know, here I was, um, you know, I've been married for about a year and a half. Uh, I had my first child that was just born. And I honestly can say, I mean, I, I wasn't sure how we were going to get by. It, it was tough, but you know yeah, what? Yeah, you start to question. Yeah, you do. Like you're just, oh, you, you, you really are down on your knees. And, you know, I find though that, you know, when things are, are tough and when, you know, you can, you taste the bitter, I feel like the sweet is even sweeter, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, um, so I was able to appreciate the better times and, you know, and what got me out and I, I did thankfully get out of it was just really looking up to God and asking for help. And, um, and it was those dreams, like those dreams that I had that I swear, Audrey, I swear they saved me. It was my ability to dream that mm-hmm. saved me. Right. And, you know, and it's funny, right. Cause I remember when we were kids, right. You know, you, you dream, um, super crazy dreams. I don't know about you, but you know, I was obsessed with Superman. <laughs> I was constantly <laughs> like jumping off the picnic table, trying to get some momentum to fly. Thank God I, I didn't try anything higher, <laughs> but you know, I just, right. Like the princess castle and we just, we dream just so limitlessly when we're children. Um, and we just have that simple belief that it's achievable, right? Like absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, you know, but just something happens when we grow up, sadly, um, you know, just somewhere along the way, you know, someone tells you that you're not smart enough or you're not pretty enough, or, you know, you're not good enough. And maybe it was, you know, experiences that culminated for you to feel that way. Um, you know, and then you start to dial down your dreams and, you know, you're, you're told that your dreams are unrealistic and sadly, you know, on a subconscious level and, you know, we, we believe it, you know, mm-hmm. and so really what do you do, you know, when you feel like that, when you feel that you're not good enough. And I would have to say after some soul searching and thinking about it, to me, the magic and the key is to open yourself up to the possibility that you are worthy. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I like, think what I'm hearing from you is, um, this ability to, um, move out of the drama, if you will, and the littleness yes. of, of, um, you know, the human experience, right. We kind of get stuck in this repetitive, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, um, in the dream, I think is, is, what allowed you to step back and see a larger view of what you're up to and be like, you know, is this serving me? Is this drama, this littleness serving the bigger picture of my life? That's what I heard in dreaming. Yeah. And it absolutely did. And, you know, once that spark was there um, and it was always there, like I, you know, I, I just always had that in me, that just that little spark. I knew that, you know, um, there was more that I wanted and, but I also knew that I had healing to do. And, um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to, um, find a life coach, you know, it it was amazing how I found her and, and I started to do the deep work and the healing. And, you know, I learned about how I was really blaming a lot on my life, right? I was really playing that, that blame game. And I'm telling you, nobody was winning from it. Like, yeah. It was not a good game to play. So, you know, so I started to recognize that and, you know, I released the blame and, you know, really started to become accountable because I was not accountable. I just, I didn't want to know what was going on, you know, my bank account. I I didn't want to know what was going on with anything. I just want to go my merry way and just, you know, hope and pray that, you know, things were going to work out, but that doesn't really serve you either, right? Like you really have to you know, adult, <laughs> as people adult are saying, can be hard. Right? It can be hard, <laughs> and but I'm fun. But I think not. you hit the nail on the head there being accountable, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and being accountable for yourself and being accountable for the fact that, yeah, it's time to grow up. It is. And, and, you know, like you, you really give away your power when, when you behave in that way. Like I was, I was actually, you know, somewhat irresponsible and, you know, blaming others. But when I became accountable, I literally took my power back and you can't control everything in your life, but you can certainly control, you know, you know, what's within your sphere and you can also control how you react to it. And that was, was so much of my healing. And, you know, I really became much more self-aware awareness as we know, is is huge. And I was aware of my self-talk, you know, how Mm -hmm. worthy, you know, I I was and, and, and how worthy I thought I was. Cause I catch myself saying things like, you know, Oh, I could never afford that. Or, you know, when I reach this income level, you know, then I can have that, you know, that kind of thing. And I really had to learn to shift my mindset into the now. It's a sneaky thing. I was talking about this in the first segment, like, it's not good enough. Those three words, they're sneaky little words. And, um, sometimes we don't recognize, like you said, recognizing is the, is the first step, but sometimes it just sneaks under the radar and affects us more than we know. It is. It's so, it's crazy. And, and at that point, I remember thinking that I was really moving along in my healing and doing well, but yet it would pop things like that. And it would, it would shock me. Oh my God, did I just say that? And we know there's just such power in your words. So being aware of that, you're right, was huge. So, you know, and it takes time, there's certainly no like switch that you can just flip and say, okay, now I'm worthy, right? It's becoming yeah. aware, right? It's, it's doing the work. It's baby steps. It's, yeah. It's baby steps. It's, it's really recognizing where you're at. And, and for me, it was really a daily practice of love. Like I really had to learn to love myself so much and to connect with God and to be to be honest, I really had to honor the things that were holding me back, right? The parts of my story that left me feeling unloved. You know, I felt abandoned. I felt unlovable and really, you know, unworthy of more. But, you know, this is this is where, you know, my message really has come about now in, in what I'm doing because, you know, I started to embrace my story instead of blocking it out, right? So much of us, we want to we want to hide our story, the ugly ugly parts, the pain uh-huh. parts. We want to hide it to the world and put on that face and be positive, <laughs> right? Yes. Like, it's good. But I mean, you don't, you know, when you, when you really own it, when you really own it, which is tough to do, but when you embrace it, um, you know, that's, that was the shift for me. And I'll tell you, it was when I recognized that I deserved it, that I deserved everything I ever, and this was very key that I, everything I'd ever wanted, you know, and even if it was just simply to be loved, like not even just those, you know, material things, you know, but it was when I hit 40, right? Of course, when I hit 40, right? When we things get- really came into view when you hit 40. <laughs> Michelle, we're going to need to take a break, but quickly, I, I want to share where people can go and find more about your story. Because on your website, you do beautifully share um, your story. So if you go to michelletagola.com, uh, mm-hmm. we can learn more about you. And of course, you're on Facebook and Instagram and all of the fun stuff. So Michelle, we're going to talk more um, sure. about your story and your work when we come back. Um, after the break. So, of awesome. course, I'm Audrey Michelle, and you're listening to Rewired Life Radio. You can always go to AudreyMichelle.com and find out more information about my work and the upcoming guests on Rewired Life Radio. So when we come back, Michelle and I are going to talk more about her work around worthiness. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Curious about the meaning of life? Do you want to deepen your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. 
Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. The school also organizes group meditations each year to benefit humanity. Whether you're just beginning to reflect on the spiritual side of your life or are a more experienced spiritual seeker, the school warmly welcomes you to join our group. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit esotericstudies.net. That's esotericstudies.net. Are you struggling in a relationship and deeply craving some tools and support to get things back on track? Do you crave having a loving, compassionate relationship with Mr. Right, but always seem to pick Mr. Wrong? Well, Sarah Luce can help. She's created a four-week online course starting September 28th that will teach you how to shift your energy and behavior to have new transformative outcomes. And you're going to get a personal one-on-one session with Sarah to ensure you get powerful, personal results. Sign up today at saraluce.com. Have you ever said to a friend, I am trying to be less stressed. I am hoping to meet someone special. Or how about, I am working on getting a job I love. Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show, Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Words like hoping, wanting, and trying may seem innocent. However, they carry with them emotional weight that actually blocks energy. Next time you start to say these words, say instead, I am becoming less stressed. I am looking forward to meeting someone special. I am pursuing a job I love. While your brain may resist, note how your body physically feels as possibility of success suddenly appears. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my website at elitetarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T dot com. Welcome back to Rewired Life Radio, where we learn to love, heal, and celebrate. I'm your host, Audrey Michelle, and today we are talking about how to shift from not feeling good enough to feeling totally worth it. So my guest is Michelle Tagola, and um, she's a women's empowerment coach and has this beautiful story of finding worthiness in her own life, which she shared with us in the last segment. And so this shit segment, I want to shift into how worthiness shows up uh, for her coaching practice and in her leadership roles. So Michelle, uh, first of all, share with us again where we can learn more about you. Um, definitely. Yeah. So at michelletegola.com uh, is, is really where you've got everything, you know, about what I do and what my vibe is about and some little freebies there too. Mm-hmm. Always fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's start here. Um, what are some of the ways, because we were, so the last segment kind of ended where we were talking about how this not good enough is, a, it's a sneaky, it sneaks under the radar and kind of nips at us when we don't notice. Yeah. And so what's some of the ways this not good enough is showing up for your clients? Well, um, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's everybody <laughs> has it. Right. And, it, and honestly in business, it's, you know, I coach a lot, uh, in, um, in business and people that are, are starting their own businesses and, um, and, and it really sneaks up, you know, when people have got the dream board going, they've got, you know, their affirmations, you know, they, they, they know their income goals, they've got it all down, but that, that magic piece is really, and f- fully stepping into, you know, your worthiness. Like, are, do you really feel worthy of these things you want? Do you really believe it? And, you know, that, that magic of believing is, I mean, there's been books written on it, right? It's, it's huge. And, you know, what I do really is I ask for permission, um, you know, to be, you know, really open with them. It is quite disarming to do this with someone, but, you know, I ask for that permission to really tell them what I see in them. And, And, you know, when I'm able to speak with someone and and just tell them, you know, I see the potential in you to, you know, make this amount of money. I see you speaking on stage. I see you, you know, and I'm just really open. And it's amazing what can happen when, you know, someone is telling you something about yourself that you, you know, 
don't see in yourself. You know, it, it, it's it's crazy, right? Where you just, wow, well, she's saying it. You know, it must be true. Yeah. Right? It's almost yeah. like you can see the other person like sitting up straight or like, really? Yes. Really? You think that of me? Oh, yeah. Wow. And it, because she said it, it must be true. And it, it just, it's, it's really amazing to see the energetic shift in someone when you are open that way and, and you can just let them know that. And I think that, you know, when you don't believe in yourself, when you're, you're not feeling worthy, it is really huge when you surround yourself with people that do believe in you, that can believe in you for you, you know, mm-hmm. and, and give you that sort of strength. And you know, that all it is, is just that spark, that spark of possibility. Could it be, you know, that, wow, that this person has just, you know, quadrupled my goals and they see it in me and I can see their conviction. And, you know, when you can see that in them, that they're, they're just starting to shift, they're just open to it. it that honestly, it, it's like the magic is in that moment of possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and then I'm finding that, you know, as we're working through, you know, each, each task along the way, and they're having, you know, a small success in their business, in their life. And, and it just works as a stepping stone and their posture gets better. Their, you know, that, that worthiness, that sense is just, you know, one step further and further. And then, you know, we really, you know, I work a lot with, you know, having them step into that leadership role themselves. Cause I think that, you know, once you're, you know, starting to, you know, step into that role and, uh, you, you find that uh, your your mess, your mess, your your issues, they really melt away, right? Because now you're serving others. Now you're you're looking to um, you know in, inspire them, and and by doing that same thing, it's just a it's, it's amazing, right? How our own issues can go away. Like you'll see when you know people do volunteer work, you know, it, it's just amazing. You know, you you could have all sorts of issues. You're on your own, but when you are, you know, serving others, that energy is it's just so magical, and and what happens is is so so huge, and it helps you to really step into it. Yeah. The, the idea of coming from a bigger place and yeah. serving a, a bigger purpose than, yeah. um, again, going back to, you know, what we were talking about last segment of, um, kind of running in the rat wheel of, of the littleness and the drama of, um, what's going on in our own life. And I, I can't help but think about, um, I had a guest on the show, Denise Onofre. Uh, she wrote the book, uh, Your Relationship with You. And one of the things she writes about in her book is our brain loves to create problems, you know? Yes, exactly. Because it likes to solve problems. So so it creates this thing so it can solve the thing. But, but if you're able to step out of it and, you know, like you said, dreaming yeah. or being in these leadership positions where it becomes yeah. bigger than yourself... Yeah. You're able to shift out of the littleness and, and, you know, get out of the forest and be able to see all of the forest beyond like all the trees in front of your face. But absolutely. that's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when, when you're helping someone work, you know, and, and, and um, move forward in their business, it's definitely about, you know, being action oriented, but also, um, you know, just, just really, like we said, just shifting that focus off of yourself and looking at, you know, who are you serving? You know, what is your, your heart led purpose with your business? And, you know, what is your why? Like what is, you know, it's like that why power is so much more, you know, powerful than, than what you think it might be. Right. You know, people are starting their business to, um, you know, oh, they've got their dreams. They've always wanted to do this. They want to make money, obviously. And, you know, and then they've got these, these income goals, but it's getting really deep with, you know, why, you know, deep down, why connecting with that, why connecting with your story again, you know, really stepping into that and embracing it. And then, you know, all the rest of that day-to-day stuff, just, it does, it just melts away because it's not important anymore. You know, your struggles that you're going to have in life, that you're going to have in business, they're there, you know, except that they're, they're part of life. But if you can look at that as opportunities to grow, you know, as learning opportunities, you know, that you're not failing by any means, you're only learning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is, this is just so huge. And, and I see that, you know, when we're doing coaching, when we're, you know, I'm working with people in their business and you see that people are just, 
just flying. Like there's just nothing better than when you see someone like I have, you know, you know, one person I've been working with for so long and, you know, she's a single mother and man, like she was, she was so shy to speak in front of people. And, you know, she had that spark though, that we spoke about earlier. She, she knew she was meant for more Mm -hmm. and, you know, she just had so many struggles in her life. And it was at the times when we had those conversations about like, you know, remember, remember those struggles. Those are teachers to you that, you know, A, you, you, you're you meant for more. You're not going to go back there. You're moving forward, right? And, you know, allow that to inspire you. And now, you know, I can see her going from, you know, this person that was kind of shy, kind of timid, you know, knew what she wanted, but just didn't know how to go about doing it to now absolutely thriving. Her energy, just even on social media, her posts are so positive. I mean, we've become you know, such good friends in the process, you know, because you, you just that connecting and it. And it's just, it's so wonderful um, to see that transformation. And, you know, for my own work, you know, to, to see that is, is so huge. Like every time you yeah. see someone healing from their story, you heal That's that inspiring. much more. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I mean, I get to speak to a lot of women in business and, and coach women in business. And um, I really feel like being in business for yourself, being an entrepreneur, um, you, I feel like it's a fast track to recognizing your yeah. own issues, yeah. you know, because I'm like going to work and having somebody tell you what to do, like you have to come up with it on your own. And so yeah. when you're being held back in your life, you're being held back in your business. Yeah. So I, I, um, I really find it fascinating. Like what shows up in life shows up in business. It's so funny you to work through that. It's so true because, you know, when I hired my life coach, you know, I say, you know, I knew I had work to do, but initially when I had hired her, it was for business. I was so frustrated in my own business. I wanted to move further. And, you know, as she did the coaching with me and and started to delve deeper and started to realize that I had all sorts of wounds that I need healing, she was like, whoa, (laughs) we need to, we need to work through this stuff. You can't ignore that. And it was only then, like, I'll tell you, I checked off all the boxes in business. I, you know, I was fierce, but once I, only once I really started to, to heal and to acknowledge and become accountable, only then, you know, who I was as a person, just talk about stepping into, you know, my greatness and and into my light and, and, you know, really owning it. It it was only then you're right. And, And you have to deal with it when you're in business. You do. You do. You have to. Yeah. Michelle, this is so great. I can't believe how fast our time is going. I know. <laughs> but so much of this is resonating with me and, and so many other people of, you know, feeling not good enough. It's universal. We don't, you can't escape it. It's, it's yeah. a human, human experience for sure. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we can all try to deal with it and escape it, but, but it's still going to be there. And so like you're saying it, you have to look at these things and heal them. Um, and it's like it, it, once we get it healed in one part of our life, you know, it kind of shifts in the other. And, and yeah. I feel like, you know, the universe only shows us what we're able to deal with. Right. Right. It's, and so in some areas you're just like, but I've been going along just fine. Like, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the universe is like, okay, we're ready to deal with it over here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's so true. I've definitely had that in my life for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, my gosh, Michelle, um, tell us one more time how to, how to um, learn more about you and stay in touch with you. Well, certainly, you know, I, I've got everything on michelletegala.com. Um, you know, you can definitely connect with me there. You know, I really want to hear from all of you. I want to hear your stories and, you know, and in whatever place that you're in. And, you know, I'm on social media as well on Instagram and on Facebook, um, you know, and, and you can find me at hashtag boss, babe, mompreneur. And uh, yeah, you know what? I, I'm out there. Yeah, I'm happy to connect with people for sure. Absolutely. Michelle, thank you for shedding some light on some of these, you know, difficult but important topics. And so um, I want to invite everybody. One thing I've been doing is on my Facebook group, um, it's Rewired Life Dash Awakening. I've been doing Facebook Lives um, after the show to kind of discuss my favorite parts. Um, And so you can ask your questions there. And I know, Michelle, you'll be popping in and out too um, to answer if people have questions, we can definitely show up there. So awesome. Michelle, thank you so much for being with me. Thank Um, you. Yeah. And sharing your ideas around, you know, feeling not good enough and shifting into that worthiness. Um, So everybody, you're definitely going to want to check out what Michelle is up to. Of course, her, her website, 
website, uh, michelletagola.com. Uh, so this is Audrey Michelle. You're listening to Rewired Life Radio. And as a reminder, next segment, I will be taking your questions. Uh, you can call in at 800-930-2819 or send your questions uh, via the Transformation Talk Radio website. So we will be right back. Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Are you stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, and low self-esteem? Do you crave a life of inspiration, love, self-acceptance, and fun? Sounds like you're on the verge. On the verge to your next big thing. Join Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio, helping you use your breakdown for a breakthrough, overcome life's greatest challenges, and live the life you want and deserve. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio or visit seattlehealinghypnosis.com for more information. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. Okay, you guys, we are back on Rewired Life Radio, where we learn to love, heal, and celebrate. I'm your host, Audrey Michelle, and we just spent the last couple of segments speaking with my guest, Michelle Tagola, about worthiness, worthiness in your life, worthiness in your business. And again, I'm taking your questions about shifting out of shifting out of that yucky place of not feeling good enough and into feeling totally worth it, right? Don't we all want that to just like the faster we can get out of that cruddy feeling and back into high vibing. So I'm taking your calls. You can call the station um, and Justin will pick up at 800-930-2819. Or you can type in the chat box if you go to Transformation talkradio.com. Um, there's a place where you can type in your questions as well. Uh, so for those of you who listen to the show regularly, you know the fourth segment. It's where I really like to ask, how do you show up in your life with intention? So of course, you know, a little bit different today, but we're going to frame this. We're going to reframe this in a way of how do you um, intentionally check in with yourself to see if you're operating from this place of feeling not good enough? You know, Michelle and I were talking about um, 
it's sneaky. It's a sneaky little thing. It likes to fly under the radar and take over whatever it is you're doing without you even no- even noticing. And like we said, recognition is absolutely the first step. Like unless you can recognize that you're operating from a place of feeling not good enough, uh, there's not much you can do for yourself. Um, so here's what's going on. How can you recognize and be intentional and check in with yourself and see if you're operating from a place of not feeling good enough? So, you know, Dr. Pat and I were talking about this on Monday, um, being in, being able to check in with yourself, uh, it takes the ability to quiet the noise around, not only around you, but within you, right? There's just as much noise inside of our head, inside of our body as there is on the outside. So, um, you know, I, I talk about this in terms of this process, in terms of loving yourself first, and it really does start with love, loving yourself enough to take a deep breath and check in. So your body, trust me, I do this, like this is my life now, your body will tell you if you give it the space to speak, if you just give it the space to speak, right? If you treat your body like a small child, if you ask that small child a question, chances are they're going to answer it. So if you ask your body the question, you know, are you operating from a place of feeling not good enough? Like, are we feeling not good enough right now? Your body will answer. So you just have to be in a place of receiving that information. And that's where a lot of us get stuck. It's, um, you know, we weren't exactly, me anyway, I wasn't exactly raised with the tools to be like, okay, body, are we feeling not good enough today? That didn't happen. I don't have those tools. I had to teach myself those tools. I had to go find those tools. So don't feel bad if you're just like, oh, Audrey, what are you talking about? Like, I do not know how that works. But like I said, if you just sit in silence, and ask, and then listen. And that's a courageous place to be, to sit with yourself and actually listen to what your body has to say. So many of us just like to shut it down. Um, So really sit and listen. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, During the break, a question came in from a woman named Angela in Denver. And she says, um, I'm a young professional working in a very competitive job market. I've been very successful thus far in my career. Uh, congratulations, and uh, have never had any poor reviews by managers or peers, but I'm constantly feeling self-doubt, mainly around my ability to create new ideas or tackle complex problems. Um, And she says, I'm not sure when these thoughts started because it hasn't always been this way. So she wants to know, is what I'm going through related to these um, short circuits and pathways Um, and to worthiness? And do you have any tips to stop these negative thoughts and feelings that continue to come up? So a few things. Um, Yes, absolutely. Uh, These underlying feelings of worthiness is what you're going through. And um, this is absolutely your neuroplastic pathways, creating a short circuit that isn't really helpful. Um, And, you know, it is difficult to understand where this started, obviously, you know, just over the radio, I would, I would need to dig a little bit deeper with you to understand where it started, but sometimes that's not even important where it started or why it started. Um, The important part is that you're noticing, right? So it's possible that these things, I think Michelle and I were talking about this earlier, it's possible that these things have been running under the radar long before you started noticing, long before today when you're just like, ooh, I think I think I might be going through these worthiness problems. Um, but like I said with Michelle, the universe really, um, it only starts to show you problems when you're ready to deal with them. And so apparently today, lately, uh, the universe is like, hey, guess what? We've got some worthiness problems and we are ready to look at that. And so that's huge. First of all, give yourself a congratulations. Come from a place of love of being like, hey, awesome. I'm going to be able to deal with this now. And so some of the things, um, tips for you quickly here in our last couple minutes, um, it's something to know. You know, sometimes there's just nothing to do necessarily. You know, we're such a like do culture, but sometimes it's just something to know and to notice. 
And then you can come from a place of forgiveness. Um, you know, I, I like to talk about this, this mantra a lot, saying to yourself, I forgive you, I'm sorry, and I love you. Uh, so again, it's just something to know. And then come from this place of forgiveness for yourself and love for yourself. And then, like Michelle and I were talking, get to that 30,000 foot view, you know, um, get out of the weeds, get into the air, get on that airplane and ask yourself, you know, looking down, is this serving you? Is it serving you to continually repeat in your mind, oh my God, I don't think I feel worth it. Where did this start? You know, again, like I said, um, my guest, Denise Sanofri had said, our brain likes to create problems because it likes to solve problems. Is that what's going on? You know, is it actually real that you're not worth it? Or is it just a problem that your mind and your ego are creating for itself to solve? So start to question, is this serving me? Get out of the littleness, get into like the bigger view of your life um, and ask yourself, is, is this serving me? So, um, you know, during my six weeks, um, six week masterclass, Soul Awakening, I'll be sharing more of these tips of how to shift out of feeling not good enough and any other of these like yucky feelings that aren't serving our overall life. And again, we're spending this month of August on Rewired Life Radio discussing these topics that go within the class. And you can go to AudreyMichelle.com and find out more about this class. You can also go to my Facebook group. Um, and we're going to be talking more about this here shortly as I go live on Facebook. Um, it's Rewired Life Dash Awakening. Um, so you can join me there. Uh, but as we close here, you know, rewiring your life is about creating a new nervous system, creating new neuroplastic pathways and breaking these short circuits to our emotions that are not serving us well. We do this one choice at a time, moment by moment. And with a new nervous system, we'll be how, you'll be a new person looking at the, new, the world with new glasses. So if you're ready to look at your life differently, to heal your wounds, to shift your thinking, I have several ways we can work together. Of course, the online class that I'm talking about, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and you can absolutely learn more by going to Audrey Michelle, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com. All the info is right there on my webpage. So I want to thank my guest today, Michelle. Tagola and um, for her sharing her story, for sharing her beautiful work. Um, and thank all of you for turning in to Rewired Life Radio. You can join me every Wednesday at noon Pacific at rewild, rewiredliferadio.com. Uh, and next week, I'm so excited. We are going to learn or unlearn, more importantly, unlearn these negative patterns we have picked up or created for ourselves, and then redefine success in our own life. So that's it. You guys have a great week and tune in next Wednesday for more Rewired Life Radio. You've been listening to Rewired Life Radio. Learn to love, heal, celebrate with author, speaker, and spiritual growth coach, Audrey Michelle. You can listen live each Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Download the podcast and connect with Audrey at AudreyMichelle.com. That's Audrey Michelle, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com.